the sinister face of ISIS, a militant executioner notoriously known as Jihadi John. He has now been identified by several media organizations. Jeff Semple is on the story in London. Jeff. Well, Heather, for the first time, that ISIS militant known as Jihadi John has been publicly unmasked, identified in reports published this morning by the BBC and the Washington Post. Their reporters conducted interviews with the friends and contacts who say they are all but certain that the militant in those infamous ISIS videos is a man called Mohammed M. Wazi. Now, British security officials are not confirming that identity. They announced last fall they knew who he was but did not want to release it publicly for operational reasons, they said. But Mwazi is believed to be in his mid-twenties, reportedly from a well-to-do family. He was born in Kuwait, but grew up in a middle-class neighborhood in West London. And those who knew him growing up say he was a devout Muslim. He was polite, he liked wearing stylish clothes, and he graduated with a computer programming degree from the University of Westminster. Now, in fact, that university has just released a statement in the last hour saying they are sickened by the news that one of their former students might have become an ISIS figurehead, Heather. Jeff, if you say, as, as uh, you just did, that security officials said they knew who he was back last fall, have they given any indication as to when they began getting suspicious of Mwazi? Well, the suspicions, it seems, date back to 2009. At the time, Mwazi left London and traveled to Tanzania for what he said was a safari vacation. But when he arrived in Dar es Salaam, he was arrested and briefly detained. And when he returned here to Europe, he was questioned by British security officials who suspected he'd actually been planning to travel to Somalia to join the militant group Al-Shabaab. Now, his friends say Mwazi was very upset by the whole ordeal. In fact, he gave an interview about it published this article published in a British newspaper back in 2010 claiming in it that he'd been a victim of harassment and racial profiling not long afterwards Mwazi reportedly decided to move to his birthplace Kuwait claiming he had been engaged to a to marry a woman there that he had a job lined up but British authorities prevented him from leaving this country reportedly for security reasons somehow in 2012 Heather he managed to travel to Syria and join ISIS Lots more questions and reaction to come, including a British-based human rights group who claims to have had contact with Mwazi over the last few years. They're preparing to hold a press conference now, and we'll bring you those comments as soon as we have them.